Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service this Sunday morning. Um, as you can see, we're still in my study, still in lockdown, but that won't stop us worshipping God together. So hopefully you've got one of the service sheets. We're using the same one as we did last week. You have a hymn sheet with two hymns on. Uh, if you need a hard copy of my sermon, um, hopefully you've got one of those. And the readings this morning are taken from Acts chapter 2 and Luke chapter 24, if you want to find those in a Bible. So let's worship God together, shall we? As we come together this morning in our own homes, we do so, knowing that as we pray, we are not on our own. We may not be in a church building, but we are still church as we pray together and worship God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so now we're going to say our prayer of preparation as we prepare ourselves to worship God. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as we come to worship, we need to give God all those things that come between us and him. Those things that we've done that we know we shouldn't have done. Or perhaps things that we thought we should have done and we have forgotten. So let's offer all those things that we want to say sorry for to God now. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. So may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we're going to sing and if you can see one of our song sheets, our hymn sheets there, you'll see that with one of them is we have a gospel to proclaim. And so we're going to sing that together now.
Oh, I love it. I love it when we sing together. It's just great, isn't it? Uh, and that one is a particular favourite of mine. And you might be interested to know that um, the CD that I'm using is actually the Huddersfield Choir, uh, which is brilliant because, of course, we are in Huddersfield. So we're using them to help us to sing. Uh, so now we have our readings. And as I said, the first one is from Acts chapter 2. And we're reading um, verse 14a and then we skip to verse 36 to 41. So then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptised, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, and our Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 24 and we begin at verse 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days what things jesus asked about jesus of nazareth they replied he was a prophet powerful in word and deed before god and all the people the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem israel and what is more it is the third day since all this took place in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who had said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. Jesus said to them, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
So um, I've got a few words to say about that particular passage. I love that passage um, in Luke's gospel that we've just heard because it gives me confidence to know that even when I don't recognise that Jesus is there, when I'm so absorbed in my own problems and worries that I'm not aware of him, he still walks along beside me. He still helps me. In the story, two followers of Jesus are on their way from Jerusalem to Emmaus, which is about seven miles. They're talking about everything that has happened. The death of Jesus, the women going to the tomb and finding it empty, the disciples hiding behind closed doors. And while they're discussing these things, a stranger joins them. They have no idea who he is, of course, but he's obviously not a local because he appears to have no idea about what's been going on. We know that it's Jesus, we're told, but they don't recognise him. But why don't they recognise him? Was God deliberately keeping them from seeing Jesus? Well, maybe, but it would have been for a reason. God always has a reason. And of course, the reason is that they didn't understand. They couldn't grasp what had happened, even though scripture had told them time and time again and Jesus himself had been telling them for the last three years that he'd been with them yet they were still struggling with the events of that weekend so how were they going to understand and accept that he was right there with them so as they walked along talking to this stranger they explained how Jesus had been a prophet and how they had hoped that he would save them but now that was all gone. They were grief stricken and they were caught up in how they felt and how their dreams had been shattered. They had expected so much from Jesus, but now it had all come to an end. They had no idea what Jesus had done for them and how he had saved them. All they knew was that they were still under Roman authority and Jesus was gone. Jesus sees their pain and he sees their confusion and instead of chastising them for not remembering what he told them, he begins to teach them about everything that has been said in scripture, things they should have known but had forgotten in their grief. Perhaps he talked to them about the sacrificial laws in Leviticus and about how there was to be an ultimate sacrifice made once for all. Maybe he talked to them about what Isaiah had to say about the concept of the suffering servant, the one who would be wounded for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Maybe he reminded them what it said in the Psalms or what the prophets had said about the coming Messiah. We don't really know. We just know he taught them from scriptures. You see, Jesus wasn't sent to earth on a whim by God. It was a plan. It was planned and is told in scripture from the very beginning of time. They had just forgotten. And they had forgotten because, as I said, they were so caught up in what they thought it should have been rather than what God had told them and promised them all along. And you know, that still happens today. We get so caught up in how we feel or in what's happening in our lives that sometimes we forget what God is doing around us and we don't realise that Jesus is walking right there beside us. Unlike the men on that road, we don't have Jesus in the flesh to remind us about what he did and why he did it. But we do have the Bible and it's all in there if only we read it and remember it. But you know, it's more than just knowing what's in there. I have friends who can quote the Bible chapter and verse, but they don't believe a word of it. It's only through a real and living relationship with God that we can truly know his love in our hearts and his grace in our lives. And that real relationship starts when we invite him in. So back to the road and this encounter with Jesus Time must have passed quickly as they discussed all these things because suddenly they're at Emmaus and they're so excited by, by what they've been talking about that they don't want it to end. Stay with us, 
they say, and invite Jesus to go and eat with them. And of course, he accepts. And it is as he breaks bread with them that they recognise him. Well, they must have been stunned at this point. They must have been full of questions. Why didn't we know it was you? Why didn't you tell us it was you? What happened to you? Did you really die on the cross? But before they can ask any of them, Jesus is gone. But they're so excited and ready to tell others that the, the amazing news that they set off immediately, didn't matter that they were tired, they set off immediately back to Jerusalem and the disciples. You see, when you know the truth about Jesus, that he is alive and there for you, then you just have to tell others. But just like those two men on that road, people have to be ready to hear the truth. Jesus knew they weren't ready when he first met them. But as he walked with them and shared his life story with them, they opened their hearts to him and invited him in. It tells us that they were burning in their hearts. But they had to invite him in. It tells us that Jesus was going to walk on by. But they invited him to go with them and he did. Jesus never forces his way in. He has to be invited. But he's always right there, just waiting for that invitation. There are so many people today who are walking that road to Emmaus. They are trying to make sense of their lives and what is happening. And they don't understand why things are the way they are. They need to know that Jesus is on that road with them. But how will they recognise him? Well, that's where we come in. We have to help them. Imagine what it must be like to have no idea that Jesus is there waiting to help. Imagine how it would feel to be doing it all on your own without God. I've been on that road and I'm here to tell you it's not easy. There have been times in my life when I couldn't make sense of what was happening and I couldn't find God. Thankfully, he was always there to guide me and to bring me back. Sometimes that was through people who encouraged me and gave me their time. At other times, it was the place or the situation I was in that helped me to see that Jesus was right there beside me. What about you? Have you ever felt that you don't know what life is all about or why you are doing something? How have you found your way back? Prayer? Reading? Other people? It doesn't matter how. The important thing is that you managed it. And now you can help others in the same way. How? Well, you just need to be there. You need to offer the encouraging word, the helping hand, the loving care for all those who are struggling with life and show them the love of Jesus just by being there for them. As this crisis continues, let's remember that Jesus is right there with us on this road and let's tell others that he's right there with them too. He wants to help them, but more than that, he wants them to invite him in so he can show them how much he loves them. I know Jesus is there, and I hope you do too, but let's show the world that he is there for them as well. Amen. So as we remember that Jesus is there on this road with us, as we continue in this lockdown and waiting to see what happens, let's affirm our faith. Let's affirm the fact that we believe that he is here with us. So we say together, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. So let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am always with you. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others and for ourselves, and keep us in your care. 
We pray for the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. And so now, in the silence, please pray your own prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As the lockdown continues, we pray for those who are vulnerable, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. So again, please pray into the silence for those who are vulnerable. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our homes and families, for those we love but cannot see at present. We ask you to keep them safe and happy. So again, your own prayers for your family. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask for a blessing on our local community, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for, and where no one will want to cause harm. So again, your own prayers for our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who are sick and need care. So please do now name those people you know who just need God's, God's healing hand upon them. We pray too for all those who are suffering under this COVID-19. We ask you to be with them too. So lay your healing hand upon them all and give them courage. We thank you for all who work for the NHS, the emergency services and for all those working in essential roles. We pray too for all those working to find a way to destroy this virus. Be with them and give them wisdom and knowledge so that they will end this crisis soon. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so as we come to the peace, we reach out to those maybe we share in a room with, but maybe we're just reaching out in our minds to those who we know and love. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So as you know, we can't share in communion, but I will take bread and wine on your behalf. And as I do that, please pray and ask Jesus to fill your heart as if you were receiving it for yourself. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children 
and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to them and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His bread, his body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So as our Father taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The Body of Christ The Blood of Christ So we say together, God, our creator, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, whose love pursues us our whole life long. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life to us in word and deed, even unto death, even death on a cross. Come, Holy Spirit, feed us with your love, that we may be filled with power to love God with all our hearts and souls and minds. Amen. So we're going to sing again. We're going to sing our second um, hymn for this morning. And you'll see it there on your sheet. A great, great hymn of praise. We're going to sing Tell Out My Soul. So let's sing together. <laughs>
I just love that one, don't you? Absolutely great. So now our prayer of blessing. And as we pray this prayer, um, think about all those that you want to be blessed by it. The Lord bless you and watch over you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. So live this day in peace as you love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen indeed. So there we are. Another Sunday worship and I just love the fact that we're still worshipping together. So please do come and join us again next week. Um, in the meantime, there are a couple of assemblies on um, our website now for children to watch if you want to go to them. Uh, I'll be doing another one this week. And we are having a Zoom prayer and praise on a Wednesday. If you'd like to be a part of that, just contact me at julie underscore anderson 51 at yahoo dot co dot uk uh, let me know that you'd like to be a part of that and i can include you uh, in that and we can pray pray and praise god together uh, so until next week it's been great sharing this with you bye for now